then it'll give you three to one again. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Banu Vimla, and I'm a product manager with Cisco Nexus 1000V business unit. Today, I'm here to talk about Cisco Nexus 1000V-based OpenStack solution. First, what I would like to do is I'll actually uh, show like a three-minute video, and the video will basically give you what exactly the Nexus 1000V-based OpenStack solution offers. Once we are done with the video, I'll talk about how we deliver the value, and uh, that will include some of the technical details on how we actually deliver this value to the customers. And let's get started. So you're ready to launch. So you're ready to launch your first OpenStack open deployment in a live production and environment. Up. And why not? OpenStack is a great foundation for enabling modern, self-service, on-demand cloud consumption. The good, is, the good news is you've already deployed OpenStack in your lab, but likely on a small scale, with minimal infrastructure contingencies, fewer security risks, and far fewer things that can go wrong. But as you know, but as you know, there are significant differences between a lab and production environment. Perhaps you're moving. Perhaps you're moving from a VMware ESXi vCenter production environment to OpenStack KVM, and you're concerned about compliance, security, availability, and scalability. How confident are you that your OpenStack deployed tenants and applications will be compliant and secure, that you'll be able to monitor those applications and quickly troubleshoot and resolve problems, and that all required policies can be applied consistently across the infrastructure? Fortunately, you can gain that confidence with Cisco Nexus 1000V for OpenStack, an industry-proven enterprise-class virtual networking solution. On the security front, Cisco Nexus 1000V provides stateful firewall functionality within your infrastructure to isolate tenants and enables isolation of virtual machines with policy-based VM or network attributes. But what about policy control? You could rely on configuring policies for each application, but that's both time-consuming and error-prone up front. Not to mention, if a policy changes, you'll have to reconfigure potentially dozens of tenants and applications using that policy. Or you could take advantage of Cisco Nexus 1000V's policy framework, enabling centralized enterprise compliant policy management, pre-provisioning of policies on a network-wide basis, and simplified policy additions and modifications across the virtual infrastructure. And when it comes to application visibility, Cisco Nexus 1000V provides insight into live and historical VM migrations, and advanced automated troubleshooting capabilities to identify problems in seconds. It also enables you to use your existing monitoring tools to provide rich analytics and auditing capabilities across your physical and virtual infrastructure. Now you can take full advantage of OpenStack's self-service, on-demand cloud capabilities on your multi-tenant infrastructure without compromising the security, policy-based control, and application visibility you need with a Cisco Nexus 1000V-based solution. Want to find out even more? Please visit us on the web. OK, so if you basically look at it, uh, there are three main things that we actually offer with the solution. One is security, other one is policy-based control, and we offer a visibility, application-level visibility. Now let's take a look at like how we actually deliver these uh, features uh, in your environment. So before we go into, let me briefly talk about the Nexus 1000V architecture. So if you think of uh, a modular chassis that you probably might have used in your networks like Nexus 7000s or Catalyst 6500s, Nexus 1000 has a similar architecture, but it's more virtual. So the supervisor module in Catalyst 6500 or Nexus 7000 is what we call like uh, in Nexus 1000 environment, a virtual supervisor module, VSM. And the line card is basically called virtual ethernet module. Now the VSM basically is a virtual machine that actually runs on a compute node, I mean like a separate blade, or it could actually run on Nexus 1010. And the virtual ethernet module is basically the data plane forwarding module which runs on your compute node. So that's the uh, uh, virtual ethernet module which provides connectivity between virtual machines running on the same host. Now, we expose this Nexus 1000V uh, into OpenStack by using Neutron ML2 plugin. 
So the virtual supervisor module will basically talk to the OpenStack using ML2 network plugin driver. And at a high level, the components for this architecture include virtual supervisor module, which runs as a virtual machine. And you have virtual Ethernet module, and you need one per server. And you have service nodes, which are optional, and I'll talk about them in a minute. And then uh, you have Neutron plugin, which will basically integrate the uh, expose the functionality of an XS1000 V2 OpenStack. And the first thing is security. So we offer something called Virtual Security Gateway, which, which comes with the solution. And Virtual Security Gateway is a layer two zone-based firewall. It provides you like stateful firewall functionality. And you can identify traffic based on both network and virtual machine attributes. So if you think of it, this will provide you a micro-segmentation functionality. Meaning if you're trying to secure traffic going from east to west within your data center, you'll be able to provide stateful firewall functionality for this traffic using virtual security gateway. Now let's see how this works. So what happens is when you have traffic coming in, when you see the first flow, when the flow hits the Nexus 1000 virtual Ethernet module, what we do is we use something called a VPath, which is a service chaining technology that will redirect the packet to virtual security gateway. So once you get to the gateway, the gateway will basically decide uh, what type of rules that needs to be applied to the packet. And then it will actually return the decision back uh, of, like with the cache. So what we do is, once we get the packet back, we cache the result and keep it in the Nexus 1000 virtual Ethernet module itself. And from there on, any, any further packets that come, we actually directly send them uh, through the VEM without going to the VSG. So that way, you basically get a stateful firewall securing east-west traffic. You will be able to do that based on both network and virtual machine attributes. So it's pretty powerful, and it's included in the solution, so you don't have to pay for it. And it's part of uh, uh, the Nexus 1000 package itself. And the next one is a policy framework. So when we talk about policy framework, think of it uh, like if you have a particular application, and if you have a certain type of uh, features that you need for that application. For example, like if your application needs like IGMP snooping because it's a multicast application, or you want to probably enable span for that particular application, or you probably want to enable NetFlow. So what you could do is you can group all these features into one uh, a profile called port profile on the Nexus 1000V. So you have like a uh, place where you can put all the features that are required for that application. And you can expose that feature pro port profile via the Neutron API as a policy profile, which is visible at the Horizon dashboard. You can expose that using the Neutral CLI as well, configure them. And this policy profile will show up as a template in your Horizon dashboard. So all you have to do is, when you are trying to like uh, deploy virtual machines, get storage and compute, when it comes to network policy, you just choose the template, and that template will have all the network-wide policies that your administrator would like you to keep. And then it also gives you a one place where you can enable like enhanced features like span or like NetFlow or any of those uh, like IGMP snooping functionality features. And the last one we talked about is the visibility. So think of it, uh, if you have like, say like 10 different physical hosts and each one running like 10 virtual machines each. So you total have like 100 virtual machines in that scenario. And if a particular flow goes from like one virtual machine to a different virtual machine and a different virtual machine before it goes out, and when you have a problem with that flow and if you want to troubleshoot, today the way you would do it is you need to run TCP dump on each host figure out where the problem is, and probably the times are not synchronized, and it's really complex. So what we do with Nexus 1000 is, we basically offer something called SPAN and ER SPAN. What that does is, again, you go back to the policy profile and enable these features, and you can choose any of these 100 virtual machines we talked about that you want to monitor. And uh, what it does is it basically takes the traffic from each of these virtual machines, which you chose to monitor, and send it to a monitoring station where you, ha you could have something like Wireshark running. That way, everything is synchronized. You're actually not going like node by node trying to troubleshoot. You have a way to actually monitor certain flows, and you can choose what type of flows you want to monitor, and you can actually choose where you want to send the flows. So this is a pretty powerful feature. It's been there in uh, all the Cisco physical devices, like 
like catalyst devices and excess devices and you get the same functionality at virtual layer as well. And this is a different visibility feature. So this feature name is called VTracker. What it does is when you move a virtual machine from one place to a different place, uh, today you don't really have a way to figure out where it moved and when it moved, what are the type of statistics that move. So VTracker provides you a way to figure out where did this virtual machine move from and where is it currently sitting? What type of port is it attached to? And what are the, like, the statistics that you have with it? And we provide three different views of how you can actually look at uh, the virtual machine mobility. You can get from the network switch view, meaning like how would a switch see a virtual machine moving from one place to a different place? Or you can see it from the virtual machine itself. And you can also see it from a VM NIC level view, which I'm actually showing as an example in this slide. This is a pretty powerful feature. And when you move virtual machines from one place to another place, and you want to like see where it moved and like when it moved, you will be able to actually uh, look at all these uh, things using this feature. And this slide basically summarizes a bunch of features that we actually support with Nexus 1000V. And all the features that you see here are consistent with your physical Nexus devices. So when you configure something on the virtual, for virtual workloads, you, will, you can be sure that you get the same consistent feature uh, performance and uh, functionality for both physical and virtual workloads. And you have like a lot of features like IGMP snooping. If you're running multicast kind of environments, you can use IGMP snooping. And we support like jumbo frames. And we support VXLAN, both in unicast and multicast mode. And we have VXLAN layer 2 gateway functionality. And there are like a lot of features. And it's a pretty powerful switch. And you have, uh, today, we actually support Nexus 1000V with two different distributions. One is with Red Hat. Uh, we are part of the Red Hat distribution. Uh, if you are using OSP, you can actually choose Nexus 1000V as your virtual switch when you deploy. And we use the OSP 6 installer, so everything is automated. Your VSM and VAM, you don't have to manually install them. Everything is integrated into the installer, so actually you can just use the installer to install all these things. And we are also part of the canonical distribution where we use Juju Charms to do the same thing. So. But depending on like what choice you choose for your like hypervisor or the OpenStack, we are part of both Ubuntu and OpenStack. Uh, sorry, Ubuntu and Red Hat. So those are slides I have. Do you guys like what questions you have for me? How many VMs can VSM support? Today we support up to 128, and in the next release, which is coming out end of this week, we are going to support up to like eight VSMs. So you have a pretty big scale. So they will be clustered together, all the VSMs? All the VSMs, each one will actually talk to the uh, ML2 plugin to the OpenStack. Great, thank you, Sri. Um, with the, the hardware version of this, which I believe is, is the 1110. Yes. Um, if you want to support multi-hypervisor environments, both KVM and uh, VMware, per se, do you need to have multiple appliances to do that, or can you do that with one? So this is actually a pretty interesting solution. I, you don't have that type of solution today in the market, with both. Uh, Could you repeat the question? question? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is basically, how do you like use OpenStack to manage multi-hypervisor, uh, like VMware and then KVM using OpenStack? So the answer to that is today we actually support uh, Nexus 1000V on uh, KVM, Hyper-V, and uh, uh, ESXi, and uh, the VSM, each one integrates with their corresponding management uh, solution. For example, if you take VMware, we integrate with vCenter. If you take uh, Hyper-V, we integrate with System Center. And if you take KVM, we integrate with OpenStack. Now, if you want to use OpenStack to manage all three of them, that's a solution that's technically doable. And I mean, I would like, love to get like more customers giving me this feedback so we can prioritize and have that solution available. Again? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.